Hi guys, Janine here. Welcome to In the Kitchen with Janine. If you're new, welcome to my YouTube family. If you've been with me a while, you kind of have an idea about what's going on. I haven't posted as often as I usually do because I haven't felt good. Today is day 11 and I have vertigo, a certain type of uh, pinched nerve vertigo in the back of my neck. And I suffer from TMJ. In the beginning, I thought it was mostly my TMJ and all the stress and tension and all of that was causing it because I woke up Monday, 11 days ago, and I, I went to get out of the bed and it, uh, spinning dizzy, like the weirdest dizzy I've ever had in my whole life. Anyways, that's what's been going on with me. I had that. And I think it's due to the stress of everybody knows that's been my little YouTube family. Some people here that have tuned in during the last month. Uh, Vinny, my husband, who's my cameraman, he's uh, taking a rest today. He has to have open heart surgery. The news came to us suddenly about four weeks ago out of, uh, he came home from his yearly physical, his uh, cardiologist, he was fine. And then he came home with that news because he has an aortic aneurysm and he had some blockages. Long story short, I don't want to dramatize that, but all of that stress has just been on my shoulders and neck, I guess. And I just tightened up. I'm feeling better, but I'm not hundred percent myself and his surgery is going to be July 2nd. So cross your fingers, keep those prayers coming. And I'm not going away. I may post a little bit less, but like I said, this is my therapy and comfort and not having been able to talk to you guys and do it for over two weeks is really been something I missed. So I'm back. That's what's going on with me. And I'll post during the next few weeks. I'm, I'm going to be doing some stuff and putting it on the side so that when I'm taking care of him for the first few weeks post-surgery, I'll be also having stuff to put up for you guys. Please continue to give my channel the love it needs and hope that you stay tuned and stay with me because I love each and every one of you. So with that said, I'm going to get into today's recipe. It's not glamorous by any means. It's not difficult, but it's a favorite and it's super nutritious. I'm going to show you how I make my simple lentil soup that you could turn into a stew if you added meat, lots of options. I'm going to show you my basic simple version and give you some tips and ideas of what you can add to beef it up and make it even heartier. And this is the, the king of the beans, so to speak. I did a little research and there's actually a national secret reserve on lentils so that we never run out of them in our country. That blew me away. And that's true. As soon as I get the data on it, I'm going to link it to this video because I think it's interesting. Okay, I have hubby's glasses because again, I think wearing my eyes, you know, doesn't help the dizziness. I had these store-bought um, home goods glasses that I don't think worked out too well for me. Okay, here we go. Let's get into it because it's quick and I'm going to have to do it in pieces like I'll tune out for while it's stewing away because it takes a good hour and a half. So a little bit of avocado oil in the bottom of a pan. I'm going to let that warm up and we're going to dice up celery, carrots. We'll put the onions little red onion I had already from another recipe. Another tip is I get the sticks in the snacking section of the carrots. I put them in cold water. We snack on them and I use them as I need them for recipes. So that's a pretty good idea. You know, you have them to do triple fold, double fold, whatever. I love my food to work for me. Okay. Same thing with the celery. I just put them in a bunch of water and they last for weeks. I mean like three weeks. And then we're just going to chop some up. Now, I'll talk to you about the food and all the things you can do. Normally, not normally, most of the time I used to, and I'm going to focus on my cutting so I don't cut my fingers, because usually I'm right in your face, but I'm not going to do that today. I normally and usually put a protein of some sort, a pancetta, uh, I'll take the filling out of a sausage link, uh, if I have some leftover pork, even a pork chop, something, meat, I'll put that in with the sofrito of the onion, celery, and carrot, and that beefs it up. That's one way. You could add whatever you like. You could add ground chicken, ground turkey, ground chopped meat, whatever your favorite protein is, and then you're going to make it more of a stew and much heartier. Today, because I'm doing the carrots and celery, I'm going to not do sweet potato. I happen to love this with sweet potato added. It's delicious, very delicious. But, and I have a sweet potato, but you know, we had it last night with dinner and I've been cooking all simple stuff. If you've seen, I think I may have posted one night I had a little bean bowl 
and last night we had um, ready-made um, if you ever see them, they're absolutely fantastic to have in the freezer. Those cordon blue chickens, you get them at Publix or any supermarket. They come two to a pack and they have like seven different flavors. They have um, chicken parmesan flavor, apple and brie. We like the cordon bleu. It's just ham and cheese and they're delicious. They cook 35 minutes in the oven. And we had that with a sweet potato and another fresh vegetable. So we have that kind of frozen food with fresh veggies when I can't cook. And they're a great thing to have in the house because who knew? And Vinny doesn't cook. But one night he pitched in, the second night I had the dizziness, and he actually roasted my chicken to my direction. So, and it was a lovely dinner. But he basically did it all for me. Another night we had regular hamburgers with veggies on the side. An old favorite for both of us that we grew up eating. My grandma used to make it for us. Just take your regular hamburger meat and make it into a patty and serve it with mashed potatoes and veggie. Canned veggie, fresh veggie, whatever. And it's a complete meal and it's very satisfying and very warm and cozy. So we enjoyed that. We've been eating simple and tonight's another simple one. But I had this video up in my past videos. You'll see a short on my lentils during holiday time. You'll see the other one that tells you the history of the lentils and why we eat them in New Year's Eve at midnight for good luck. I'll link both of them to this video so that you have them all on hand. But I never did say and show from beginning to end how I do my basic lentils because when you see the video I link to this, you'll laugh. I was trying to do Lydia's version. Lydia, you know, everybody knows Lydia Bistanich. I'm saying her name wrong, I apologize. But she had this wonderful, oh, involved sofrito and all this pancetta and everything. You blend it in the blender and you put it in and then the lentils. By the time I finished cooking hers, I guess I'm so used to my basic that midway through the video I even told everyone it was too much going on, too many spices, too many herbs. I didn't care for it. So I, I kiboshed hers and I cooked mine and I showed mine and I wrote my recipe, but I never did it from start to finish. So that's what we're doing today. So we put onions, a little bit of olive oil. If you want to use olive oil, I used avocado. Any one you want. You could even use vegetable. It's up to you what you have, what you want. Put a little olive oil. You get your onions. It could be red, could be white. I would say half an onion. I'm going to put everything in the description as far as quantities and amounts. And then you just let this um, sweat down, as they say, right? Let the onions and all of that sweat. Let's do that while we're here. I miss everybody. I miss my natural energy. You know I'm much more uh, movement. I'm not making any fast moves, I'll tell you, because that's the thing with this type of pinched nerve. I can move my head this way and I can move it that way, but sometimes if I look down and then get look back up, I get that woozy feeling. It, it comes and goes, I don't know. And there's not much you can do for it. If it lasts long enough, I'll probably have to see a chiropractor that specializes in from the neck up. They have a, a name for it, my condition, a pinched nerve that causes vertigo, something genic. I don't have it, the name, but uh, it's what it is. And they gave me muscle relaxers, and I made my own heating pad for that special area. I took a sock and filled it with rice. If you don't know this, you could, like the heating pads they sell in the store for a lot of money, you fill it with rice and put it in the microwave and heat it for 30 seconds and it lasts hot and I customize it to the size I needed it to be. And I've been doing that. I've been taking anti-inflammatories. He gave me um, steroids to help cure it faster. But the problem with that is he said I have to take it, I have to keep my blood pressure under 150 in order to take the steroids. And with everything going on, Yesterday, Vinny had to go to dental to pre-op for his open heart surgery. Uh, yesterday, he did all of his pre-op at Cleveland Clinic for open heart surgery. I couldn't go with him. He had to have, they scheduled him for like seven tests from 11 till 4. Or it was an all-day event. And I said, if I go, I'm just going to get sicker. I'm trying to really heal myself and get as strong as I can because we're alone here in Florida. I'm going to be his caretaker. It's just me. I don't have anybody. My sister-in-law has volunteered, but, you know, things could happen. Maybe she can't make it. My brother had his heart surgery last year. So you just never know, and I want to be strong and help my hubby. And I want to cook because 
I want to have my connection to all you guys because this is all I'm going to have. It's just going to be us. So stay with me. I don't really have much else to vent to or tell. So I'm not going to go on and on about that. Let's get back to the food because that's what you're originally here for. Okay. Once that's sweated down, you're going to take, I use Goya. It's my favorite lifelong lentil my mom made. I make. It's always delicious. They always cook perfectly. I took one full cup, rinsed it and drained it and looked for little particles and you're going to take it and you're going to put that in with all your sweated onions and carrots, right? Do that. Let me move these bowls out of the way and my junk. I like it neat. Now, liquids. You can use just pure water if you like, but I like to have a mixture of both chicken broth, excuse me, and water. Now, let's see. And I do a big combination. I'll put it all in because I'm like crazy with flavor. This thing needs flavor for me and it's just delicious. So I'm into this Pacific. These little containers are fantastic because they're low sodium and they're very flavorful. So I'll put like one full of this right? Start off flavor base. I'm going to amp up the heat to get her going. And these are pricey. That's why I'm being a little stingy. I could do the whole pot with them and you could use a, a full 32 ounce container and that would be enough to start. But because these are so pricey, I use them one and now I'm going to add more water and something else. I'm going to take a measurement of one, I'm going to put more water. So that would be two cups. Two cups. Three. And we're going to do about four cups to start. And as the lentils, four cups of water to start. Three water, one chicken broth. And now let's get my extra little secret seasonings. Okay, here's my Nors I sometimes use. Here's bouillon cube if you like. I'm going to use a teaspoon or a tablespoon, let me see. And this one has the salt. Yeah, I'll be um, not so liberal with this one because it has salt. So let's say so far we don't have any salt in there. We got low sodium, no salt. Let's put about one tablespoon of that. Okay. And then you'll taste as you go. Sometimes things fluctuate. You may want a little more. You put it. And as this water, it's going to stew now for about an hour, or an hour and 20 minutes. It's got to absorb all the water. I like it pretty, pretty thick. If you like it less thick because you're going to add pasta to it or something, that's another thing. We don't have any meat in here. When it's finished cooking after 90 minutes and the lentils are very plump and they've sucked up all the flavor and water and they're the right consistency, you can add pasta on the side. Cook it on the side so it doesn't get soggy and add it to a bowl of the lentils. And that's a real full meal because you got your veggies in here, got your beans, and then you have your pasta. So that's going to stew away. I'll come back and show you the consistency, what it should be like when I consider it done and what it looks like, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, they're ready, and I want to show you so you can see the texture of it. And it took, I'll put the time in, you'll see. Once you see the texture of how it should look in the bowl, you'll know exactly when they're finished. That's why I want you to see. And I did add an extra cup of chicken broth because I wanted it to be extra flavorful. And one other ingredient that you have to add, and I forgot, but I put it in late. No biggie. A teaspoon to a tablespoon of tomato paste. And some people don't put it. It doesn't make a difference. It's just going to make it richer in flavor. It's not going to be tomato-y. It's not going to be nothing like that. But it just adds more flavor, layers of flavor. Lentils are earthy and pretty, you know. I'm going to put the camera so you could see. Okay, you can't really see. When I show you what to look for, I'm going to bend the camera for you so you can see. And once you know what it should look like, you'll understand. I'll lift the bowl. Okay. And let me bring it closer to you. 
and you'll see in the thumbnail too you see how you see the lentils sorted through the surface and it's not watery and soupy that's how it should look and at this point is when you could add the pasta I cooked some pasta on the side let me show you and I lost most of it down to the drain so here's my ditalini that we're going to add in here to Vinny's dish but I, <laughs> I lost the most of the pot down the drain because I have this thing look at this don't trust them ever I have this that you leave on the pot and it's supposed to go out these little lids and I was doing and the water was coming out and then all of a sudden it slipped and I was able to save that little bit but these are absolutely delicious I'm gonna put everything in the description for you and if I find that data I was doing some research while it was cooking that's called the seed banks there's seed banks all over the world and lentils is in there so that we don't ever lose them because they're super nutritious next time I'll do red lentils for you guys and make more of a stew out of it they're all delicious and I love making them I missed everybody I'm glad to be back Please continue to watch and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.